So for me, inspiration is all about priming my mind and feeding it lots of material that will create momentum and will energize it to start finding ideas. So for this project, I've been using this sketchbook here to take lots of notes, write down all my ideas, basically brainstorm. This is my low pressure sketchbook. I draw really loosely, really freely in it. I don't try to create anything finished or aesthetically pleasing. I think only my patrons have seen inside this sketchbook. I don't have any expectations for myself when I work on this sketchbook and whatever fills those pages, fills those pages and it doesn't matter what it is really. For this project I started off by making lists. It wasn't finished ideas, it wasn't full concepts, it was literally just words that felt inspiring, things that I find fun to draw, things that make me excited. I usually go by feeling, so if there is a concept, an idea, a colour, an animal, a plant, whatever it is, that sort of sparks excitement in me, even if I don't know exactly why, even if I don't have an idea fully fleshed out associated with that word, I'll still write the word down. Writing them down and then often rereading them just gets my mind going and I start getting more ideas. And as soon as I get the spark of an idea in my head, I'll write that down too. I don't wait until the idea is fully formed. I don't wait until it's a fleshed out composition in my head. I only need to write down the beginnings of an idea and then it will usually lead me to have more ideas, either along the same theme or something completely different. Writing down things means that my head doesn't have to remember it, I don't have to try and hang on to this idea too strongly because it's written down, it's there, I can reread it if I need to. So my brain just snowballs and more and more ideas start to emerge and I start feeling really inspired and whenever I have one idea I will usually have five more coming with it just because there's you know lots of different things that can stem from one concept. That's why I write everything down. It's a way for me to get an idea out of my head and onto paper to create more room for new ideas. Another technique I use to get my inspiration flowing and my imagination going is to compile and print out a few of my favourite sketches. I usually pick drawings that aren't quite finished, ideas that I would like to refine in the future and turn into bigger illustrations, concepts where I'm not entirely sure where I'm going yet but would like to keep in mind, and having those images taped to the wall in front of my desk means that even if I'm not constantly studying those pages, they are still in the background of my mind and they are still fueling my imagination and keeping me creatively energized. So I am now at the point where I have a few ideas that are quite fleshed out and quite precise that I really like. So my next step is going to be creating some small thumbnails, figure out the idea in more depth. I'll probably keep working in this sketchbook. I'm going to be using these 5x7 pre-cut cold press watercolour paper sheets. They're a pretty good size for this project, so I figured why not?
Okay, so uh, <laughs> last week didn't exactly go as planned. I was really hoping to get all my sketches done in like a day, maybe two, and then I could start painting and I was hoping to be about halfway through painting last week, but that didn't happen. It took me a lot longer to do all the sketches than I was expecting. I mean, it's not unusual, I do tend to overestimate myself a lot of the time. Something I need to work on. <laughs> I'm also exhausted and I'm finding it more and more difficult to be as productive as I would like to be every day and every week. I think part of that is because I haven't had a break since January. I haven't slowed down, just kept going at the same right rhythm and I'm definitely feeling the lack of break at this point. So I'm sure you'll all agree that this year has felt like 10 years in one and we're barely more than halfway through it. So, <laughs> But as much as I did manage to get as much done last week as I wished I had, I did manage to finish all the sketches. So I'm quite happy with how many I have and I think this week I'm just going to focus on painting them all so I'm going to do as many as I can every day I have other things to focus on at the same time because as I said I have so much to do uh, <laughs> I have to start proper work on my big painting I also have to do a medium sized painting as a print for patrons I have a process PDF for my patrons to do also I have to send all their rewards another YouTube video that I want to film lots and lots and lots of stuff so I'm gonna jump on painting today. I think I'm gonna start with my favorite sketch of the bunch, which is this like Medusa beard portrait thing. <laughs> as soon as I start painting, I'll probably get more excited about painting the other ones and stuff. I literally just poked myself in the head with the corner of this, ow. Anyway, I'm gonna start doing that and uh, we'll see how the day goes and stuff. And I'll just chat with you as I go. Um, <laughs> sorry if this video is a bit of a mess. I'm a bit of a mess. So, you make what you are, really. So, anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna get my paint out. I'm probably going to use watercolour and gouache for this because I haven't used either in a little while. Enough talking, I'll just get to doing.
I ultimately decided to do the inking on the outline all in one go for all the paintings so that at least I had that done, they could dry and then I could start only setting myself up to paint instead of switching between my inking setup and my painting setup. My brain is absolute mush today. I really str <laughs> I'm struggling like crazy today. I have this small painting here. I finished, I managed, I didn't do a bunch this morning. Went to the post office with some orders and did some Patreon stuff and things. And, and then I managed to finish a painting which I'll show you in a sec. But I now have started on another small one and I 
I realized at one point that I've been staring at it, not doing anything with my paintbrush in my hand for like a good five minutes. I was like, oh god. <laughs> Guys, I completely forgot. Guys, look. Look! Look, you can see yourself. <laughs> look at what came in the mail yesterday. How cool is that? Ah, it's so cool. Look, it's not gonna focus, is it? Thank you to all of you for this because, I mean, this is to celebrate all of you, really. So thank you so much. It's so easy when you grow a bit on social media to become quite jaded towards the numbers and to forget that um, it's a number of people. Like, I get between five and 10,000 views per video, and although it feels like I should get more because I have more subscribers, I try to actively remember that that is an insane amount of people anyway. Like, I created a piece of content and between 5,000 to 10,000 people watched it. That's mind-blowing. <laughs> that's amazing. That's, that's, I don't know, I do genuinely feel incredibly grateful because not only that, but those of you who watch my videos on a regular basis and those of you who comment regularly and I see you, I promise to see you and I notice that you do, the amount of joy you bring me and the amount of happiness and um, and just motivation that you bring to me to keep doing what I'm doing is just incredible. There's no words for it. Like. Every single comment that you leave me um, as a show of appreciation for my content It's just unparalleled. It's 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 I don't know. It's 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 awesome. <laughs> my brain is mush, I can't talk. <laughs> so emotions are a bit hard to make come across right now. Anyway. You're awesome is the the um the TLDR of this whole rambling segment. <laughs> You're awesome and this is this is to celebrate you and to celebrate me and I'm very proud of it thanks to all of you and I'm probably going to put it up on the wall next to my two Game of Thrones Emmys because of all the achievements in my life I think that those three things are things that I want to be unashamedly proud of so they'll probably go up on my wall and yeah uh, I just wanted to show you and say thank you for everything. So it's Friday right now, Friday evening, it's what, five in the afternoon. So this week I managed six of those small paintings, so about half of them. Today I painted the crow and I'm going to try and finish the one I've got on my canvas right now, which is the face with the spikes coming out of it. I'm going to try and finish that tonight so that I can say that I have six done and then I'll keep painting over the weekend and I hope to get a good portion of the remaining ones done. The first two ones I painted, these two here, I've turned into stickers now. Stickers! Turn those two paintings into vinyl stickers for my July patrons and then this weekend I'm going to work on turning these two into stickers for my August patrons. So if you're interested in receiving these two as vinyl stickers, um, you can sign up any time in August to qualify to get them in the post. Um, Ten dollar patrons get two stickers a month. Um, yeah. <laughs> I still have three, four, five, six, six of those small ones to do. I also am working this medium sized painting which is also another priority because I'm creating it as a print for my patrons. Anyway, my plan for the rest of the evening is going to try and finish this small one here, spiky face man person. I was planning to work out today but <laughs> this is not going to happen. <laughs> yeah, so finish the small painting and then not work out and then cook something tasty for dinner because I feel like something tasty and and then just 
pass out on the sofa watching something on the TV. Because honestly, I can't think past like one hour from now. <laughs> See you soon. Before we jump into the rest of the video, I thought now would be a good time to tell you a little bit more about this video's sponsor. I'm sure most of you are familiar with Skillshare by now, and if you are, you can jump straight to the description to use the link to get two months of premium membership for free that Skillshare is offering the first 1,000 of my viewers. But just in case you're not sure what Skillshare does, here's a little recap of what they are. So Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives. And by creatives, I mean anyone who has some sort of creative bone in their body. It doesn't need to be necessarily art. It can be anyone with an entrepreneurial spirit, anyone who likes to put together their own projects, anyone who has an idea of their own and want to take it further. It's a platform with tons and tons of courses and lots of different topics. I'm obviously most familiar with with their artistic content but they also have lots of really good videos about filming and editing. A course I can wholeheartedly recommend right now to you is the sketchbook illustration for all Draw Your Day in Watercolour and Pen by Samantha Dion Baker. The course is really lovely, really relaxing, really inspiring, it really helps you see the beauty in everyday things. It's all about drawing your day, drawing your experiences to, in order for you to remember how those things made you feel and how you lived through them, which is something I've been looking to do for myself for a long time, creating a journal of my more mundane experiences to find the pleasure in simple things and in my everyday life. So I definitely recommend checking out that course if that's something that sounds appealing to you. So if you'd like to check out that course or any of the other numerous courses Skillshare offer, the first 1000 people to use the link in the description of this video will receive two months of a premium Skillshare membership for free. And then if you would like to continue your membership after the two free months, a premium membership is less than $10 a month anyway, so it's a pretty worthwhile service to check out. Plus, it's a really nice way for you to support this channel if that's something you're looking to do. Now on to the rest of this video and the last few paintings.
Okay, I managed four paintings out of the five that I wanted to get done today. I'm missing this one here. So I'll paint that one tomorrow. But I'm reasonably happy with my progress today. It's five o'clock now, so I have about an hour left of the work day and I'm gonna just continue cutting up the stickers as I find that quite relaxing. I just put a podcast on and I just zone out while I do that. I want to send out the stickers for my patrons this week so I want to get those packages done. So I'm gonna finish cutting up those stickers, do some exercise, make dinner and then just continue watching Homeland. <laughs> so I'll pick you up tomorrow for the last drawing and everything else. See you then. When I print my stickers for patrons or for my shop, I usually try to make sure that the design is about three inches on its longest side and I fit as many as I can on an A4 sheet because that's the size of my printing paper. But there's always some gaps left and in order to waste as little sticker paper as I can, I'll usually fit in like tiny versions of the same design onto the sheet to avoid wasting paper. Plus I like giving free stickers to people who buy originals or who put a big order on my shop. Things like that just as an extra thank you. And I created myself this like, custom watercolour palette in this tin. It includes all my watercolours basically and there's like a magnetic sheet that I glued at the bottom of each pan so that they stick to the tin and don't budge too much and I did myself a little chart so I know what each colour is anyway um, custom watercolour pan basically and I figured why not decorate it a little bit I might use mainly some of my stickers I have stickers from artist friends and stickers I purchased from other artists and stuff like that but I get really precious about stickers that I buy from other people because I obviously only have one or two of them and I want to have them in a place that they won't get damaged. So if I'm going to put stickers on my palette, this is something that I'm going to be carrying around, taking with me outside, putting in my bag, it's going to get scuffed and marked and dirty. So I think I'd rather have stickers I don't care as much about on here. So I might put all my tiny stickers on there. I might put versions of mine on, on here, you know, and uh, various different things I find that I don't care too much about, um, and just decorate it, and uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs>
I finished the paintings. I'm really pleased with these little pieces. They were really fun to work on, it felt really nice to just have a project that was a bit more relaxing than a big complex painting and I really like having a collection of small paintings like that, it's sort of satisfying to have a little stack. <laughs> Plus paintings like this are super versatile, I can do tons and tons of different things with them, I could put them on t-shirts, I've created stickers as you've seen, I also used a few of the as tier images for my Patreon, I'm also probably going to make a couple of them small prints maybe for patrons this month. Endless really, I can do so many things with small pieces like this. I find that Working on projects on different scales and of different levels of complexity and of difficulty can really help keep my momentum going and I feel more energised by the variety. So having projects like this where it's lower pressure and more of a project for fun rather than a project for either improvement or skill building is really welcome every so often. Don't get me wrong, I am looking forward to working on my next big painting, but this sort of project just rekindles my excitement at doing anything creative and really makes me happy to be creating again, especially when I'm going through a stressful period with my job and my life and that sort of thing. Another thing that's really useful about working on smaller pieces like this is that it allows me to explore concepts that I don't really see myself turning into big paintings but I still want to create illustrations out of. So for example I wouldn't really want to make a massive painting of that crystal head or that head with the spikes but I would quite like to make slightly bigger illustrations, maybe A4, things that aren't super complex but still explore the concept a little bit further. And so these small paintings kind of act as a sort of thumbnails or research paintings for those bigger pieces. They help me visualise a concept in colour, they help me explore composition a bit further, and they help me simplify an idea too because I'm, I mean, you've seen how I tend to ramble in videos, I'm the same with paintings. And I tend to add details and add complexity and constantly ask myself how I can push something further to the point where sometimes it's a bit too much, I overcomplicate my process. So having stuff like this where I have to reduce my concept to its essentials and make it concise and easily understandable to the eye very quickly because the illustration is so small, it's just a really great exercise for me to help me streamline my own process. Anyway, that's it for this video. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed seeing my process painting these little pieces. I'll probably have them available as stickers and prints on my shop at some point. I'm not keep you updated. I would quite like to pick a couple of them to have them as stickers for charity. I'll have to think of exactly how that's going to work, but I'll keep you in the loop. I hope this video is fun. I have another one featuring one big painting again very soon. And in the meantime, I hope that you guys are all really, really well and that you take good care of yourselves. And I'll see you very soon. Bye everyone. <laughs>